Halo sahabat Kemlu, selamat datang kembali di podcast Kementerian Luar Negeri Diplomasi Talk, Deep Talk, bersama saya Fadila Irawan. Podcast kali ini merupakan edisi khusus bertepatan dengan penyelenggaraan beasiswa seni dan budaya, BSBI, yang dikenal juga dengan Indonesian Arts and Culture Scholarship. Tahun 2023, BSBI kembali dilaksanakan secara fisik setelah sebelumnya terkendala pandemi dan harus online. Program ini berlangsung dari 1 Juni sampai dengan 18 Agustus 2023. BSBI 2023 mengangkat tema Indonesia Home of Diversity. Terdapat 45 pemuda dari 34 negara, termasuk dari Indonesia, yang telah terdaftar sebagai peserta BSBI 2023. Ada tambahan dua negara, yang baru pertama kalinya ikut bergabung sebagai peserta, yakni Tanzania dan Qatar. Nah, nantinya para peserta akan belajar seni budaya Indonesia di Sanggar Seni Mitra Kemlu yang tersebar di lima daerah, diantaranya Padang, Kutai Kartanegara, DKI Jakarta, Bali, dan Banyuwangi. Halo sahabat Kemlu, saat ini saya bersama dengan Miss Iva Michanovic dari UK. Yuk kita ngobrol tentang Iva, tentang acara ini. Hi Iva, nice to meet you. First Hello. of all, congratulations and welcome to Indonesia. Thank you so much, it's such an honor to be here. Um, first of all, can you tell us about yourself and maybe your journey to become an awardee? Okay, it's quite a long journey, but yes. Hi, I'm uh, Eva Michanovic. I'm uh, from the UK, but I consider myself uh, a bit of a European cosmopolitan since apart from UK, I've been living in four different European countries. Uh, so my journey with Indonesia started during my undergraduate studies, which were in Austria. I uh, am studying musicology, ethnomusicology more specifically. So um, I got introduced to the culture of Indonesia through my uh, degree, through through my program, and I was mesmerized by it when I first encountered the gamelan culture, the, all the lectures about Indonesia, and then uh, before my um, <laughs> after my bachelor program, before my masters, I spent one year in Serbia. And there I was a part of a dance studio, and I was uh, dancing Indonesian dances, also in Serbia and abroad, and in Bulgaria specifically. And now I'm living in Amsterdam, I'm doing my master's degree, and I'll be writing my master's, uh, master's thesis on uh, Balinese gamelan and Balinese culture. Ah, I see. That is, is so interesting. Quite a long journey. Yeah. Quite a long journey indeed. <laughs> Why were you interested in applying for the program, actually? I mean, how how could I not be? I mean, after four years of, of of studying about about this culture, I mean, to get a chance to be here, especially I was studying it during COVID. So in my mind, it was well, I was locked in my room. I was just picturing this these amazing sights of Indonesia, of all these wonderful sounds. And uh, now that I got, I finally gotten to be here. It's, uh, I mean, I'm overwhelmed. Have you, uh, beforehand, have you ever heard of Indonesia before and have you previously visited Indonesia? This is actually my first time outside of Europe, <laughs> so no. <laughs> um, but I've, of course I've heard of Indonesia, but I didn't really know anything before uh, my university, but it was all at once such a big, uh, it was one of the most important lectures in my course and I followed it for a year. And I, I really fell in love with it. Okay, so I heard that you've been in Indonesia for a while now. And I think that maybe there's a couple of experiences or um, journeys that you've had that is quite particularly interesting for you. What would it be? Exactly. So there's this beautiful anecdote that I that happened to me while uh, visiting Jakarta, while touring Jakarta, that I actually want to s- share as an additional message. So uh, we've, two days ago, actually, we had the city tour. We went all around and uh, we visited the mosque and the cathedral that are actually across the street from each other. But what I heard there is a very, very beautiful idea. Someone said, please, when you go, back into the world, uh, wherever you come from, don't say that in Jakarta uh, mosque, the mosque and the cathedral are across each other, but rather that they are side by side. And I think that's such a beautiful message to, to spread. 
It is such a beautiful message of tolerance, isn't it? Yes, of course. So here it is. I'm going to do that now. I'm not going to wait <laughs> to get back. I will, I will say it right away because it really uh, stuck with me. If you, if you were to like, uh, if you were able to travel to Indonesia anywhere in Indonesia, where would you travel first? Or to Bali, <laughs> uh, of course, because uh, because I'm mainly interested in uh, in Gamelan. But um, during my uh, when I was in Austria during my studies, I also got a chance to play Javanese Gamelan, which I also loved. So that would be amazing. And th uh, during my times uh, with uh, Bidadari Dance Studio, I uh, was dancing uh, dances from Sumatra mainly, which I love. <laughs> I loved uh, dancing them, so that would also be, I mean, Sulawesi as well. So, I mean, I can't really choose, but Bali. Bali would be my first choice. <laughs> Same. I love Bali as well. So you lived in several countries at such a young age. Can you please share that experience? Uh, to us about living in like foreign parts of Europe maybe? Yes, so uh, yeah I did. So I lived in the UK, um, in Serbia, then I went on uh, uh, to finish my high school in Slovenia. <laughs> I did my undergrad uh, undergraduate studies in Austria, uh, spent another year in Serbia like in between, and now I'm living in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. So Yes, actually, I've been, most of my life, I've been thinking about myself, that I'm this, like, global citizen, that I experience diversity uh, much more than other people, that I was privileged to, of course, to experience that. Uh, but it's such an amazing thing that when I, when I got here, when I met, actually, people from all around the world, not just this Eurocentric zone, I learned that I knew nothing about diversity. I only learned about it now, and it's such an overwhelming experience. It's so wonderful, and I think that programs like these, uh, the collaborations like these, who, who are trying to collect all these people, put them together, let them uh, meet each other, let them talk about their own experiences, uh, about their own countries, cultures, uh, while having the same goal, same things that uh, binds them together, like love for Indonesian culture, that's uh, that's so amazing, so amazing. That's such an amazing uh, story you have there. <laughs> um, and then can you share more about uh, how going to Bali becomes your dream? Maybe uh, how is it that during COVID, during isolation, of mm -hmm. course, uh, when we are all isolated, yes. uh, how do you think of Bali uh, and why has it become your dream to go to Bali? Mm -hmm. So I was actually very unfortunate in that sense that much of my studies in Austria, I, I did them from home. So in my four walls, <laughs> but then I believe that my imagination was never like louder in my head. Uh, I had such vivid uh, um, pictures of everything that I was encountering at that moment. And I was reading a lot of literature on Bali, both academic, uh, but also uh, books like literal works. Uh, books of literature, and especially uh, a book, A House in Bali, by Colin McPhee, who is a Canadian composer who spent uh, 10 years in Bali in the 1930s, before the Second World War. Um, his uh, accounts of Bali and his interactions, I mean, I, I read his book in, in, in one day. <laughs> I was so, uh, I don't know, mesmerized by it. So I would also like, to, I mean, and then... Mm, uh, I have been talking, of course, I was, uh, I was dealing with uh, Balinese culture uh, throughout Europe and Serbia and the Netherlands, and everybody I've ever talked to said how people in uh, Bali are so warm, how they're so welcoming, that um, they, they want to know so much about you, that, that those interactions... So, uh, yes, I, I, I really want to experience that. And uh, the art of Bali, which, was, which is so, to me, I don't know, inspiring to, to see it live, to participate in those ceremonies that uh, such a beautiful expression of religion that they have there that I've studied so much uh, that I want to see that, uh, that like collective spirit, how art is so engraved into, into Balinese culture uh, in a way that it's not really in, in Europe in the West uh, that uh, such ideas that of binding people through culture, through art in various ways, uh, that's so inspiring that I think that should be, <laughs> those kind of messages should be spread uh, throughout the world. Uh, what's your first impression about Indonesia? As this is your first time ever being in Indonesia, 
Uh, what is your most favorite thing so far about Indonesia at this point of your journey? Definitely the people. I cannot stress this enough. I find uh, I didn't really expect people to be so open, so welcoming. Um, I, I'm really overwhelmed. I cannot stress this enough. I mean, it, it is maybe a basic thing to say, but um, it, it made such a strong impression on me. The humor, the how, the liveliness of people, there's, how spontaneous they are. I, I just love that. Right, right. Um, I would like to ask more about your experiences beforehand. You've had an experience to play Gamelan. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a little bit more about that, maybe? Uh, explain us maybe um, how you have this keen interest uh, in improving and learning Indonesian art and literature through this program, maybe? Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, so I've been also dancing and pl I play the gamelan. As I've said, that's been uh, a part of my ethnomusicology degree. Um, we've had um, scholars who spent their entire careers uh, researching Indonesia and they were teaching us gamelan so it's not really first hand from uh, people from Indonesia but the like second generation who was teaching us uh, but I loved the the camaraderie the the fact that we were all doing it together like an ensemble I loved it I love the sounds so uh, that was quite interesting I did that for a year ah. which inspired me to of course pursue then dances when it came to Serbia for one year right because you were studying musicology and yes. ethnomusicology, right? Uh, uh, musicology is the whole degree, and I was specialized in ethnomusicology. Ah, right. Yeah. So what kind of Indonesian music do you usually look up to? Well, gamelan from Bali. I mean, that's the main thing, specifically, yes. I mean, I was, I was also uh, one of my main... Um, Things that I was researching is the westernization of the gamelan, how western composers came here and uh, researched the gamelan. Uh, when I came to, I mean, right now in Amsterdam, I am working with, um, not with libraries, but, but with archives, specifically with uh, Job Kunst collection and everything that was collected there. And I'm engaged in these repatriation programs who are tending to bring back uh, all these uh, research things back to local community, and uh, that's a very, very inspiring and daunting task. So, yeah. I heard that you actually have this beautiful voice, <laughs> and you are actually planning to share some of that beautiful voice with us. Just a bit. <laughs> Can you sing a little bit? Um, uh, any kind of song that you would like to try to sing? I mean, this is the... I can sing the theme song of our scholarship. I mean, just a couple of verses. Uh, but right now, I'm <laughs> flushing. But sure, okay. sure. Take your time, take your time. A nation of thousand islands, we love you forever. Indonesia, hati ku, rumaku, bansaku. Indonesia ku, Indonesia ku. Wow, I got goosebumps. Nice. Thanks. Uh, what do you expect to get out of the program, actually? Oh, like, I actually, I don't know. I mean, this first orientation week in Jakarta, I'm still under such an impression that my <laughs> expectations now are not the same as I had seven days ago. I'm so overwhelmed by not just Indonesia, but meeting people from 34 different countries from all around the world. I... That's, I mean, that's an experience that I cannot, I don't know how to describe it even. It's, it's such, it's so fulfilling. And you're going to go to Bali for this program? Oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm very much looking forward to it. Going to fulfill one of your dreams? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm um, going to compare my uh, experiences of Bali to my, what was I envisioning during COVID? True. My dreams, my COVID dreams. <laughs> Um, as a representative from the UK, how would you contribute to promoting Indonesia after the whole program is finished and you get back to the UK? Okay. Well, first off, I'll be back to Amsterdam because I have one more year of <laughs> university. Um, well, my, I'm, first of all, I'm a musical scholar, so I, what is expected to me is to write articles about it. So I plan on contributing to Indonesian uh, culture 
mainly through academia, through researching, through talking about it and conferences and stuff like that. But I'm also an artist. I, I mean, I sing and I dance. So I think as a friend of Indonesia, um, I would very much like to participate in all the um, Mm. If embassy needs me, uh, as it did in, back in Serbia when I was part of the dance group, if they need me in the Netherlands and in one year, because I plan to go back to London to find work eventually, which will always, uh, which will probably be within a university as a scholar, um, I would definitely be there to perform to on <laughs> occasions if they want me. I hope they will. Um, yeah, I hope um, for your program. Uh, I wish you good luck for your program. Thank you so much. Um, and do you have any messages that you want to convey to our audience? Actually, earlier this morning, uh, I've heard such an inspiring speech from the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, I, it actually left me in tears because she was talking about uh, how... Uh, we are facing these global problems and how we can only solve these problems by finding s global solutions and how culture, how diversity, how, uh, how meeting, I mean, how all of us together can contribute to making this better world, solving these problems. Uh, she said it way better, <laughs> but uh, it's something along those lines. <laughs> all right. Do you have maybe any messages that you want to, like, uh, tell your friends or tell your uh, fellow academicians or artists yeah. about like the culture in Indonesia or any programs that you Oh, <laughs> so many messages, yes. Well, just earlier this morning, we had this uh, opening ceremony of the scholarship and uh, the, minister, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia gave such an amazing speech uh, of how we are facing all these global problems and how only through global collaboration we can actually find, and, and through creative practices, uh, especially for us, uh, I mean, who represent like youth in general, that we are going to think of ideas to make this world a better place, to, uh, to find ways to, towards this global path, towards these glo global solutions so that we can make uh, a better world for us all, and Indonesia itself has such an amazing message to spread as well, it, uh, as it is home to so many ethnicities, religions, uh, so many different cultures uh, uh, shared between people who live so close nearby. It is actually an analogy for the world. If, in if Indonesia can do it, everybody can do it and should do it. So, um, yes, definitely, I think some of these messages, Indonesia speaks for itself. It doesn't need me to speak for it. <laughs> Um, such amazing um, message you have there. Um, I hope that through this program you can realize your um, vision for your studies or maybe your art artistic pursuits. Maybe. No. Oh. <laughs> um, I would like to. I wish you well for the rest of your program. Thank you so much. And I think that will be all for our interview today. It's been really amazing talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wah, wow, luar biasa ya. Bukan orang Indonesia, tapi memiliki minat yang tinggi untuk mendalami seni dan budaya Indonesia. Kita nggak boleh kalah ya, sahabat Kemlu. Mari kita terus lestarikan budaya Indonesia dimanapun kita berada. Jangan mau kalah dengan Miss Iva ya. Oh iya, sahabat Kemlu, percakapan podcast ini ditayangkan di akun resmi Instagram dan Youtube Kementerian Luar Negeri. Jangan lupa untuk like, Komen, share, dan subscribe ya. Sebagai penutup rangkaian kegiatan BSB 2023, akan diselenggarakan pagelaran seni dan budaya bertajuk Indonesia Channel 2023. Ikuti terus Medsos Kemlu untuk update-nya ya.